Hello, everyone. I am, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to be looking over here. <laughs> okay, hello, everyone. Good morning. I am doing chapter 37 of Genesis. Um, so, <laughs> um, excuse me. And so, um, let's get started. Okay, chapter 37 is about Jacob and his coat of many colors. So the first thing I'm gonna explain is the thing about colors. Colors are a, alchemically, when you look at colors, you look at black as the absence of an idea. And then you look at blue as the idea because you look at colors through the spectrum of the rainbow. So blue being the idea, purple being the institution of that idea, the action on it, red being the constant. Mm. I need to look at a rainbow. Orange, yellow, um, you go into the, the range of orange, yellow, I believe, until you go into white, white being of completion. Um, I'm gonna do a video about colors. But that's the way that the colors are looked at within the spectrum of the um, of alchemy. Um, some people see the coat of many colors as um, some people see the coat of many colors as maybe the um, what is it called the um, chakra, the chakra colors, and and in some ways, you know, having that, um, I've looked at it interdimensionally. And I've seen that in some ways it could be related to the chakra, but coat of many colors has a lot to do with Joseph being the things that God will give. So when you are um, actively worshiping and sacrificing towards that, towards that thing, towards that thing um, that you, that is your God, then those things that are given um, is alchemically in that spectrum of alchemical color combination. Red always being the constant, white being completion because it is the integration of all colors, black being the absence of that idea, blue always being that idea of that institution of that um, worship. So that's where we go with that and we talk about coat of many colors because that will give that if you are triumphant with worship which is what Israel is, and this is the son of Israel. This is the son of Jacob, those who are supportive of that. So let's get started. And 37, script 37, one, and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was stranger in the land of Canaan. So the reason why so now they're in the land of Canaan. Canaan is not where he was wanted to dwell. Remember, he didn't want a wife from Canaan. He wanted a wife from Laban, who was the completion of the goal. So the people wanted to have that inspiration or that um, um, motivation to have the completion. Okay, that's alchemically speaking. So now they're back in Canaan. But in Canaan, they have Rachel. Rachel is the you. She is the experience and skill, the knowledge gained from um, having weary as an inspiration and having um, those other children, those other beings as inspiration, those other spirits as inspiration for them to keep going. So these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was in the sons of Bilhaz, and with sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So, of course, Joseph is going to be the one who's going to bring about the evil report because he is the spirit of what God will give. So if you are inspired or if, if you are you know in where you're perceiving and receiving what it is that is given to you by that worship 
then those things that cross that, those things that are evil within that, evil being premature death, evil being um, the um, purposeful hurt or murder of innocence. Um, of course, that is going to be the thing that is going to thresh out what is evil. Now Israel loved Joseph more than his all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And and also with that too, him being the son of his old age, meaning him being the son of Rachel, that's the son of his experience, that's the son of their skill. So this is the thing, these people are worshiping this this goal, this being, this thing, um, this what what they want to achieve, this evolution. Joseph is the product of that. That is a skill, the experience, it is what is being given to them by this worship. So, of course, he's going to be the favorite. That makes sense, alchemically speaking. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully of, only of him. Now, I'm going to change that. So, I know I posted it as peacefully. Excuse me, I was, come, I was copying it right from... The text, but excuse me, wait. Um, I did explain to you before um, that a lot of times in the text, when you see peaceful, it really means harmony. Um, etymolog etymologically speaking, peace is the absence of sound, and you don't want the absence of sound in a world or in a consciousness filled with sound. Sound making light, and we are all light beings. And usually when it's in the text, it, it honestly means harmony. It doesn't mean peacefully. So he would exist harm in harmony with his brethren, but he's not. He's existing um, within a lot of, you know. It, it says resentment because it's, a, it's an alchemical way of speaking about it. Of course they would bow to what God would give because everything um, that the people did, which is what all of those other brethren represent is how they got to Joseph in the first place. So when you see this in the text, when you see peaceful, you know, you have to replace that with harmony. I did put peaceful. I will replace it with harmony when I post it, but really it's that he didn't exist harmoniously with his brethren. And we saw the example of that when we saw, um, um, what's the other no, let me look it up in my um, in my other phone. Um, we saw it in the last in the two chapters ago. I think it was in chapter thirty-five when they had to go back to Canaan. Going back to Canaan is when they're building again, when they're almost in the beginning of building this, but now they're doing it with skill. So this is when um, I'm getting to it. I believe that's chapter thirty-five. No, it was chapter 34. Okay. So we saw this when um, one of the daughters went out, Dinah. Okay, so Dinah meaning um, exoneration. Um, when they were trying to figure out how to go back to being happy, and they had this product, this, you know, Dinah being the veneration of what they were doing, tried to integrate itself within the beginning in, instead of with the skill and experience that they get gained by getting past the beginning, by getting past this stage. And so um, when you look at this, um, they're back into this stage, but they have the skills now and they have the experience now, which they've gained. And so um, as I'm saying, when it comes to Joseph, Joseph is what is gained by that. Joseph is part of the, is what is gained by that veneration. Because it is what that being will give once you have um, gotten to, once you start to get into the place where you're achieving the goal. 
So, of course, alchemically speaking, all of his brethren would bow down to him and would serve him. And that's what it'll say within the chapter, but those are alchemical terms because this is a grimoire. Okay, so we're at 36, script 36.5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. Okay, so that's exactly what it is I was just explaining. They have to bind their sheaves in order to gain the sheaves that they are gaining when they have Joseph. Because that is what you do in order to get to the place where God will give. And his brethren said, um, said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Now, alchemically, this could be also what you feel when you have all that frustration, when you have to go through all of the things that you will go through in order to get to what God will give. So you can see this and that alchem, you can see it that way alchemically also. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth. Now this is something telltale about the dream because they're telling you what the dream means within the next script. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in she in Shechem. So feeding your father's flock. So that means that the brothers as we said before, are the ones that you have to have before you can get to Joseph. So they're going to be the ones that feed the flock. They're going to be the ones that tend to everything in order to achieve Joseph. Those, um, you have to get through those spirits, all of those representing spirits. We all know who they are because we have gone through chapters, um, 32, 31, 32, 33, 34, all when um, they were um, born from Rachel, Leah, Bilhah, and Zilpah. And, you know, Shechem being the shoulder. Now remember, Shechem comes up again. Now we saw Shechem in chapter 35, I believe it's 34, and supposedly he's buried under the oak tree. But he reads again because this is alchemy. This is a book of alchemy. This is a book, this is a grimoire. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here I am. So, sorry about the typing here. I am noticing a few things. But the typing on the post before this will be whole lot better. And if not, um, if it's something that I really just can't live with, because a lot of times when I see this little stuff, I really can't stand to live with it, um, then I'll just do this again. Because <laughs> like if it's one little thing, sometimes I'll start all over again. And he said to him, go, in, go I pray thee, see whether it be See whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out to the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. Now Hebron meaning his friend. So this is an alchemical way of speaking to say that um, 
it's what you're doing. Um, measure up or um, what's the word? In line with what God will give, you know. So it's a way of saying it's what you're producing in line with God will give. If you have to go through the brothers to get to Joseph, or what the brothers doing in line with Joseph. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Now imagine the law not being in line with what it is that you are receiving from God, receiving from the thing that you are worshiping and sacrificing for. So you see that alchemically within this post, I mean within this, these scripts. And they said, they said to um, one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say, Some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben, behold a son. Oh, excuse me. Reuben means behold a son. Heard it. Now, the son is, is to be a constant. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. So, okay, so it's a, it's um, having Reuben do this makes sense alchemically because Reuben is the one who is the constant. So what you're reading here is when Reuben, the reason why Reuben is the one who does this is because if they keep tending this flock, Joseph is, Joseph is going to be the result of that. So alchemically, you are seeing it written that way. When you see these um, two scripts, 37.21 and 37.22. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren, and they stripped Joseph out of, out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. So to say that they stripped him is to say, like we said before, um, this is the result of what they are doing. And remember how I said it before, you can see it a few, you know, a different way is to say um, the frustration of understanding that this is all you have to do in order to get to this. And they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Water meaning the flow, the flow of society. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. Now, Egypt always... Um, it's the flow of society also. Egypt is also something to mean the flow of society because this entire script is Egyptian. It's all Egyptian. So this is not somebody in the Middle East saying they're going into Egypt. Egypt is where the, is the flow of society. When you see Egypt, and then you'll see the bush. Or you'll see the Hebrews. Hebrews is people who want to live like the people of the bush and worship that same God. So this is all Egyptian history in Egyptian scripts. And the Ishmaelites, remember, comes from Ishmael. They are the ones who God will hear. So this is the mean that what you are worshiping and sacrificing for is, is speaking back unto you. It's speaking back unto your action and unto your sacrifice. Like to say, almost like to say a prophecy. And um, Gilead being a heap of stones, something that they've learned, something that they've understood that's held up over pressure. With their camels, and over time, excuse me, oppression over time. 
with their camels bearing spice, root balm, and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah, Judah means praised one, said unto his brethren, That prophet is it, what prophet is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Midianites. I mean, to the Ishmaelites, excuse me, for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. So, selling him is not a good thing, of course, but this is the people, this is the, the people who are having the experience and having the um, the skill. Remember, this is a group of people. This is my, this is alchemy. So that means that to sell them into the Ishmaelites is to say that whatever it is that you're working for, that you are um, that you are sacrificing for. Um, will basically respond to your skill and experience. That's what this is saying. And Reuben returned into the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I whither shall I go? Oh, and I, excuse me, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph. And to say, I, I whither shall I go? Remember, Joseph is that, I mean, Reuben is that constant. So if you have that constant, of course that makes sense alchemically. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of goats and dipped the coat into the blood. Now, killing a kid of goats, meaning goats are the ones who are high climbers, they're good with climbing, they're, they're buttheads, which means it's somebody who would be good at argue, arguing. Um, alchemically, if you see that, killing those goats would, would make sense. And they took Joseph's coat Oh, sorry, script 37, 33, and they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. Father being the product, I mean, not the product, where the product comes from. That being the followers, mm -hmm. the um, people who support what this is. And they knew it and said it is my, and he knew it and said it is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted and he said, for I will go down to the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now saying that, oh, and the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, who is he, he whom Ra gives, an officer of Pharaoh's and the captain of the guard. So, going to discuss that. Okay, so this basically, all of these scripts in the last ones are saying, okay, they brought this into the father. The father sees that this is gone. Remember, the father is the followers. That is the people who are supporting this goal this entire time. So what they are doing is they are saying that their experience and their skills, um, all of it, even after all they're doing, it's like what they're trying to attain that, you know, Joseph being what it gives them is dying. You know, they're not finding um, that they're getting things from it at this point. And so that's like saying a beast has devoured them. But it's being sold into God will hear. You know what I mean? They sold it into the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites being God will hear. Now, if you understand what God will hear means, that's like the, being, the thing that you are worshiping and sacrificing for. That is speaking unto you and speaking unto your action and unto your work. So this is why it's important to understand, okay, he's being sold into Egypt, Potiphar being Ra. Ra is the sun god, that is the creator god. 
So it's, it's important to know that Pharaoh is a sect of time. It's a way that the Egyptians log a sect of time. So a Pharaoh is not a king. This is something that keeps Egypt, the flow of society in Egypt. Okay, Pharaoh means what the flow of society in Egypt is at that at that point in time. Okay, and something that keeps the Pharaoh, that's what it's being sold into. So what they're basically saying is he is going to be important to keeping the flow of society in Egypt going. This is what this, this script is saying. Okay? They um, what they're what they're gaining, the experience, the skill that they have, is going to be very important to keep the flow of society in Egypt going. That's what this script means. That's what these scripts means in this particular chapter. So that's that's what it explains if you can see it alchemically. Those who have ears to hear it here. Those who have questions, you can always question me. I did see a few things that um, a few definitions that I left out. Um, and so it is like me to go back and do this all over again. <laughs> so and then every time I do it, I see more and more dimensionally every time I go back and I reread it or we do um, a chapter again. So chances are I might do that. If not, it'll be chapter 38. Um, and like I said, have questions. I have no problem with you messaging me or putting it in the comments. doesn't matter. Um, but that is chapter 37 of Genesis. Um, everybody have a great Thursday. I believe it is Thursday. <laughs> Not that I don't keep up with the days because I do. It's just that somehow last week, no, last weekend. And so now every day I'm like checking to make sure that I'm on the right day. <laughs> yes, and I knew it was Thursday. I don't know why I did that. But like for some reason last Friday, I lost the day. So now I'm checking every day to make sure I have the right day. Anyway, um, so... Everybody have a great Thursday. I'll probably come back with chapter 38. And um, yeah, that, that's chapter 37.